Welcome to the Arkham Files, an actual play Call of Cthulhu RPG podcast. Featuring Seth Morrison as Tallahassee Turner. Say, hey, Billy, let's run out in the forest together. That worked out for me really well last time. Abel Morrison as Detective Billy McConnell. You've seen what we've seen. That dead light, the butthole monster. Donovan Bollard as Dr. Simeon Can't Stand Your Bits. What in the world? Where did you find that? Peter Morrison as Dominic Drunkard. We did establish there's no flamethrower, which is a crying shame. Sam Morrison as Major Frederick Aloysius Bakersfield. As soon as the going gets tough, the Tallahassee gets going. And I am your game master, the keeper of arcane lore, Alex Morrison. Now grab onto some dice and your sanity. Let's roll. All right, Tallahassee Turner, Dr. Simeon, and Dom Drunkard. You guys are in Denny's, Dom Drunkard. I flamethrower. You are, you flamethrower Denny's. Okay, you guys are in the building. You're looking around. Um, Things have been quiet for a few minutes since Percy went outside. You haven't heard him saying anything. Though you do start to hear these shouts and screams from the town. They seem to be getting louder. There seems to be a less variety of of yells from the town and they all seem to now be turning into similar screams of terror you hear a shout from uh from the roof of the building you hear percival he yells out and he says here they come they're coming oh my there's there's so many of them they're going for the beef they're going for the beef Study men. All right, so what are you guys doing? I'm gonna run out. Sorry that they main. Are they all at the main pile of the of the first beef pile? You can make assumptions. He was not specific in what he just yelled. You know what he just said. Percy, be specific. <laughs> what beef pile are they at? <laughs> Get ready! <laughs> Get ready! I ready my flamethrower and I take a couple steps out into the onto the porch to see if I can see a little bit farther. So the porch of the building, so like the front door is on the east side of the building. And the road leading to the center of town is on the south side of the building. So you would have to go out and walk around the corner in order to see down the road. Okay, so what are you guys doing? Run around the side. All right, I'm going to... I'll go around the side to the south quietly to see if I can see the smoothies. Simmy, you go with him. Shoot down the down the road. Okay. I'm going to take a Molotov with me. Uh, if you are going quietly, Dom Drunkard, roll a stealth check for me. My stealth is 80. Ooh, sneaky. Holy nice crap. I rolled a 72. Oof. Oof. Close, but that'll do. Okay, so Dom, you hear Percival shouting from uh, from the rooftop, and you decide that you're, you're going to go down and take a look. So you creep down the porch, you're pressing up against the side of the building, glancing around as you make your way around to the south side of the building, coming around the corner. Uh, you're now able to see down the street, though it's, it's dark. Uh, everything is getting pretty well lit in this area because a lot of the buildings down there are on fire. And dancing in the firelight, you you see shapes all over down there, moving through the smoke. Large shape shapes, small shapes, but all of them long limbed and headless, as they are moving through, almost like a vision out of heck, through the smoke and flames. <laughs> Dom, what do your drunk eyes see? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is there any way that I can tell, like, the number um, or estimate the the amount of smoothies? Well, how that drunk are, are you? Because you might be seeing doubles. I'm not that drunk. I only had a couple of swigs. That's my boy. It's it's really hard to get a count with the way, with how quickly they're moving. There's smoke everywhere, and the lighting and the flames uh, are kind of playing tricks on your eyes. But there's at least a dozen of them, probably more. Two dozen, maybe. It's hard to tell. And you hope your eyes are playing tricks on you because there are some moving... There are some shapes moving through this insanity ahead of you that are 
just gigantic. Some of them, their the shoulders of their bodies are scraping along the corners of some of the roofs as they move by. What? Jeez. Like, they're big enough to where they're as tall as the buildings? Not as tall as the buildings, but just on the... They're scraping along, like, the underside of some of the eaves. So almost as tall as the buildings. Yeah. If they had heads, smaller buildings. they'd be as tall as buildings. Um, are they anywhere near our first booty trap? Booby trap. Booby trap. Uh, trap. It looks like they're making trap. their way... It looks like they're making their way from the beef in the middle. The beef pile and following the beef trail. The brilliant beef trail of Dr. Can't Stand You Bits towards the first vehicle that is also just beefed up to the brim <laughs> and waiting. My mom said, my mom's, you know, said I would never amount to anything. I proved her wrong today by beefing all over this town. <laughs> That's something to be proud of. I am. Um, okay, so there are groups of creatures They are making their way towards the vehicle, the first booby trap. A few of the smaller ones uh, have arrived at the vehicle, and they're jumping on the beef. They're jumping on the vehicle. They're starting to devour the chunks. A couple of the bigger ones, the ones that are around seven or eight feet tall, they start moving in. Uh, they start gathering around, shoving each other, jumping on the fresh meat that's piled all over the place. There's a few of them, several. Several of the small ones, a few of the bigger ones. As they begin devouring all of the beef that has been beefed in this beefy abundance. <laughs> okay, so how loud, how loud would I have to talk from where I'm standing for uh, um, Tallahassee Turner to be able well, to hear Percy me? can see it too. Right? Uh, you'd probably have to shout. Okay. You guys hear uh, Dom Card, you hear a shot ring out uh, from the top of the building. Uh, so do the rest of you from inside. You hear a shot ring out as Percy begins taking shots at the uh, at the creatures down there. You see one connect with one of the larger creatures <laughs> down by the vehicle as blood sprays out from the hole that appears in its shoulder. Uh, you hear a laugh from on top of the building <laughs> as Percival seems to be enjoying himself. How close are the bigger uh, dudes are the bigger smoothies to the first trap? There are a couple of them on there already. There's probably three of them crawling on it. Of the big ones? Yeah, of the bigger ones. You guys can, if you guys can set off those explosions, I'm gonna run and Molotov the junk off out of those guys. I'm just waiting for the sign, the signal. He's waiting for the call. He's waiting for yeah. the call. So a few more of them start mo making their way over. Um, though some of them are starting to move past it. They see the, uh, um, the swarm that is, uh, all over the vehicle with the beef, and they see the beef trail leading down farther to another vehicle, and they start moving past the first one. So roughly how many are on the, the first booty trap right now? Um, from what you can see, trap. it looks like maybe six or seven on it, and then a couple kind of, uh, in the vicinity. One of them, one of the bigger ones appears to be missing an arm already. Um, with some scorch marks on it. Almost as if it was blown off in a previous explosion. It's the symbol-y guy. Uh, it does not have symbols, it just looks like maybe its arm was blown off in some sort of previous fiery explosion. So, you hear Percy. Call! Call! <laughs> Tallahassee, blow the first one. I light the first one. I ready my flamethrower. Okay. Wait, what's the range? What's the range on my flamethrower? Flamethrower. Base range is 25 yards. Sweet. Ooh, dang, son. Pretty good. Uh, okay, so what do you guys do inside? I light the first fuse, man. Okay. So you pull out your lighter and you light that first fuse and it's... And goes to zipping outside of the uh, out of the hole that you set up. I'm also looking out the the shooty holes. Okay, uh, Dom Dracar, what are you doing? I'm just waiting as well. I'm still standing uh, on the pathway leading towards the the town square. I'm kind of monitoring those few that have gone past the first uh, booty trap. Booby trap. That's what I said. Booby trap. All right. 
So it's a few seconds of what feels like forever of hesitation before a huge explosion rips through the night. As your first beefed up booby trap goes off just down the road, uh, you feel it from inside Denny's. You feel the shockwave, you hear the explosion, you see the flash of light. Uh, Dom Drunkard, it almost knocks you off your feet from where you are standing out in the open watching it. You see the vehicle uh, blow into the air and you see bodies go flying and pieces of bodies go flying through the air as the dynamite explodes. You see the other creatures that are nearby get knocked to the ground. Uh, Tallahassee Turner, since you set this up, I want you to roll 4d10. Nice. Right, seven, 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 six, nine, and nine. six. Yeah. Oh, no. Good roll. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. He killed twenty-nine of them. Yeah. Okay. You killed all the rest of the monsters. Yes. <laughs> twenty-nine. Holy crap. Okay. So, Domdrin Card, as you're watching, as you as you get back to your feet, there's smoke and debris everywhere. You see the vehicle on fire. It flies through the air for a moment before it comes back down. Uh, but as you're looking down there, you don't see any remains of the creatures that were on the vehicle. Uh, there are several that have been knocked to the ground around it. They're splayed out on the ground. Uh, a few of them are shaken, getting back to their feet. A few of the smaller ones are laying on the ground near it, but they are not getting back up. Uh, from the roof, you hear, ha <laughs> ha! Well done, men! Well done! You got him! Yeah! The first round of down, several are exploded into tiny bits. I think a few are not getting back up, but be prepared, there are more coming. I can't stand those bits. <laughs> okay, I, I want to roll a, a spot hidden and see if I can see anything in the dark that I may have missed, like sneaking up on me or, you know, anything like that. Okay, roll a spot hidden. I rolled a 10. A 10? Damn. Nice. Nice. Out of 43, so okay. that's, a, that's, that's a, success. a hard success. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you're looking at it. You're feeling a, a, a surge of triumph as you see that explosion go off and you see a number of those creatures just blown to bits. You get a surge of hope as you think, maybe maybe you guys can pull this off. If, 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 if the rest of this goes to plan, there might be a chance you guys can make it out of here alive. You're looking, you're looking down the road. You turn, you're kind of looking around at you, hoping maybe you can see Billy McConnell, maybe the truck. In the distance, you start to hear a horn honking coming from the east. And you turn and you start glancing that way. You see headlights down the road, down on this east side. Looks like maybe down the end of the road here. But also as you turn and you see those headlights, you see coming from the north something else moving in the darkness, coming from the north. And it's moving fast. There appears to be another creature coming from the north side of Denny's. Maybe Is it a flying creature or is it a land-based creature? It is a land-based creature. It is large and it is smooth, but it is bigger than any of the ones that you have seen before. Is it covered in symbols? No. Clever girl. Okay, I one step towards that one and I ready my flamethrower. It is sprinting towards you and it runs and it goes down on all fours for a moment as its huge claws dig into the dirt. The size of this one appears to be maybe 10 feet tall. Somewhere between tw 10, possibly even 12 feet tall and this one is broad and muscular and filled out. This has to be one of the adult, fully grown creatures. It's coming from the north! Look to the north! It roars as it barrels towards you. Dominic Drunkard, what do you do? Uh, I lock and load, and I spray my flamethrower into its open maw. All right, Dom, you see this creature ahead of you. You see an open door to Denny's to your left. You also see a truck 
coming down the road to your right, but it's a little ways away still. It's blaring its horn, but this creature is moving towards you at a high rate of speed. Shoot, guys, should I flamethrower it or should I try and duck back into the... Flame it, bro. Where's Simmy? Is the creature going to get there before the truck? The creature is definitely going to arrive at Denny's before the truck will. Do you have a Molotov on you? Um, I don't know. Can I? I'm pointing my gun out I'm the window. Can I yes. shoot it in the? Can I try to shoot Does it in Percy the leg? Does Percy see it? And try to slow it down before it gets to uh, Dom. Percy's on the other side of the roof from this. This is coming from the northeast. Percy's Percy's down on the southwest. All right, so Dom, what do you do? All right, uh, I'm going to flamethrower it. Okay. Um. All right, so and you. And I say. My favorite thing about America is the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so you're going to need to wait till it gets within 25 yards of you. Does he get a bonus die for that catchphrase? That's pretty good. All right, I'm going to flamethrower it. Here we go. Come on. Come on, Dom. Come on. 76. Oh, okay. 51 luck, my friend. Yeah, I'm going to spend 51 luck. He spends 51 luck. Oh, you're going to spend 51 luck? I am going to spend 51 luck. (laughs) Make sure that's not a one, because the sevens look like ones. Yeah, it's a seven for sure, because the one's right next to it. Okay. Okay, so I spend spend the 51 luck. Are you seriously spending 51 luck? Well, I mean, what's the other option? I die? You miss? Yeah, basically. <laughs> you can save your luck to uh, die. Dodge. You might still have time to run in the build. All right. Damage on your flamethrower, by the way, is 2d6. Yeah. Oh, that's it? That's not that great. It's 2d6 plus burn, um, which it lights it on fire, and that means it burns every round. I really hate this flamethrower idea. <laughs> it's going to catch our whole building on fire and kill us all. Fine. I'll fail the flamethrower. You guys suck. I didn't say anything. <laughs> All right, I'm going to fail the flamethrower, but then I'm going to try and run back into Denny's. Um, so, judging by the rate of speed that it's moving, uh, you think that you could possibly get back inside before it got to you? Uh, I'm going to try and get back inside. So, yeah, you fire the flamethrower off towards the creature. This is the first time you've ever fired a flamethrower in your life, and it proves to be a little more tricky than you were expecting as it kind of sprays the ground uh, in front of you and around, though it doesn't make contact with the creature. (laughs) It appears that the fire, though springing up in front of the creature, does give it some kind of, some hesitation rather than just plowing right through the flames ahead of it. It does uh, reel back for a second as the fire sprays from the end of your flamethrower as it is rushing towards you. It wheels back for the second and, lo- and and pauses as it's looking around, maybe for a way around the fire. So, Dom Drunkard, what do you do? I sprint back into Denny's. All right, you start rushing towards the door uh, to Denny's, and you see it moving. Um, you see it looking, it looks down at you, it roars down as it sees you moving towards the building. And the fire is in front of it. It seems hesitant to move through the fire but it's starting to move around the edge of it and work its end and coming around the side of the flames that are burning on the ground as it starts rushing towards you. I yell at the dudes inside, shoot it, shoot it. Okay. All right, what do you guys do? Well, I'm still just over by my my window because I still have to get other traps locked and loaded. Okay, Uh, when I get to the door, I'm going to turn and take a knee, and I'm going to pull out my Colt M1911, and I'm going to fire three shots at the thing's blood sack. Where is that located? <laughs> All right, so Dom Junkar, take your shots with one penalty die for for multiple shots in one round. Okay, here's the first shot. Fudge! Three and a 70. You could spend five luck, right? It's a 65. It's a 73, so it'd be eight luck. Do it. Spend eight luck and connect. It's better than 51. Okay, I'm going to spend eight luck. Okay. All right, so second shot. 
I hit 60. Oh, just kidding. I failed. 69. I'm going to spend four luck and hit with that one. Okay. Take it out, John. Last one. All ones. 67. Going to spend two luck and hit with that one. <laughs> Dang. All right. So uh, that's three D10s plus six. Dang. Are you serious? Each shot is one D10 plus two. Oh, snap. 10, 9, 6. Oh, uh, my gosh. Yeah. 31. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. oh, my gosh. Yeah. Dom Junkard, you race up the steps heading into the front door. You see the creature starting to move its way towards you, but it hesitates for a moment when it looks over and it sees the truck uh, coming towards you, distracting it for a moment. Though it looks like maybe it it's it's... It's deciding to perhaps go after this target that is now moving towards it. And it knows that vehicles are full of delicious meat, which it has been <laughs> taught. So, Dom Drunkard, you look at it. Your hands are shaking for a minute, uh, but you, you dig deep and you focus on that front side on your 1911 as you place it on, on the creature as it is moving. It, the, the eyes flickering in the firelight just below it from your flamethrower, which seems to light them up, making them perfect targets for your 1911. As you squeeze the trigger, and first shot is perfect, hits it right in the eye. It goes, it, it shuts its eye, eye explodes in red mist as the bullet hits it, and you quickly shift your aim to the other eye, pull the trigger again. Perfect shot again. You don't know how you're getting so lucky with this shot placement on this massive creature, or maybe the fact that it is so huge. And then thinking back to your anatomy lesson from Percival Warthrop before, you place it right over the most vulnerable area, right in the smoothie, <laughs> and you pull the trigger. Smoothie. Time to give you a butthole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the bullet slow motion fires out of the end of your Colt M1911, flies towards the smoothie, the smoothest part of the smoothie, exploding into it in a sphincter-shaped hole. The creature pauses for a second as the hole appears in it, and it looks down in alarm at this new... This, this new thing that it's never seen before that it couldn't imagine being on its body as it glances down for a second until suddenly all of its insides just start exploding out of this newly found butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Pouring out onto the ground below, falling into the fire, cooking up, smelling just like you wanted. Like sweet, sweet American barbecue. <laughs> The creature collapses to the ground. Yeah, good shooting. You see it, it's still shuddering on the ground. Its it, claws are starting to claw towards you, Dom Drunkard. Billy McConnell, what do you do? Uh, I mean, I'm going like Mach 10 and I just hit it and then slam on the brakes as quick as I can. Dom Drunkard. You're looking at it, you can't believe that this thing is still moving without all of its insides that are now on its outsides. You start taking aim again before you hear the blaring horn of two tons of American steel as it plows right into the side of this creature as it's laying on the ground trying to scramble towards you, running right over the top of it and smashing it into the side of Denny's. Guts and blood spraying everywhere as this creature is definitely not getting up after all that. Yeah. You guys hear, uh, you hear Percival yelling, they're not going for the second trap, they're avoiding it. They're moving away from it, they're coming around, they're, they're, they're circling around the building. I, I'm coming down, I'm coming in. Uh, what do you guys do? Uh, I get out and grab Delilah and Zachary as quick as possible. Say, get inside, get inside. Okay. Run around in the back of the truck. Uh, help Ezra get Ike, and we drag him inside as quick as we can. I cover Billy McConnell from the door. All right, you're covering him. You see Percival come running around from the south side of the building. Uh, you see him looking over his shoulder, and he's yelling, and he's just, Get inside! Get inside! 
uh, as you see uh, running up behind him are more creatures. Uh, Percival comes running past you, Dominic, uh, Billy McConnell, um, and your group. You guys all come rushing into Denny's as you guys slam the door. Looking, glancing around as you're shutting the door, you're seeing the creatures starting to come from all directions as they're moving in towards the inn where you guys have all holed up and barricaded yourselves. Where's the, where are the most of them congregating? Church. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, they're congregating at church. All right. So I go to church. <laughs> you guys are seeing them just moving around outside. They're all kind of, they're just, they're swarming from all over the place and they're all moving towards the building. So we got everybody inside. We got the woman, the kid, uh, Percival, and they brought in Ike, right? Uh, yeah, they brought Ike in. Uh, real quick, uh, Billy McConnell, I need you to roll a D10. Mm-hmm. D10. <laughs> a four. Got a four. A four? Uh, okay, add that onto your pal. Woo! Nice. Oh, Dang, dude. My, my pal, man. It's You're like a hundred Why is his pal so good? Because I got like a ten last time when I very pal first saw. Yeah, cast my spell. You hear impacts on the door. And after that, you start to hear impacts coming from various locations all over the building on the outside. All right, I think everybody needs to just open fire. As you say that, Tallahassee taking charge, every, it seems to break the spell that has fallen over everybody. And they look around, they start rushing to windows and, and firing their guns out as the night and the quiet of the, or not really quiet, but the still of the inside of Denny's Tavern now erupts in gunfire and chaos. Major Bakersfield. It's been relatively quiet for a few minutes since those creatures dragged their uh, fallen comrade, their fallen uh, beef snack, <laughs> out into the woods and began devouring it. You were hearing the sounds of crunching and chewing and tearing in the woods. Can I see them eating their friend? No, they dragged him back into the woods. You can hear it. The horrible noises of, of, of meat tearing and teeth ripping flesh and bones cracking. Hmm. I'm wondering if I should chuck some dynamite in that direction and, so that we can make a break for it. Uh, uh, I, uh, all right, uh, Major, what, what should we do? I'm doing all right. Thanks, Major. You, you really saved me back there. Yeah, of course. Anytime. Uh, look, we need to make it back to town as quick as possible, but, but we can't leave these two stragglers hanging around. We have to kill every last one of these things or they'll just keep coming back. Uh, how good's your throw? You know, I wasn't very good at that. Um, let's see, how much time do I, uh, has taken place? Yeah, it's hard to say. From the time you pulled up, it seems like everything's moving too slow and too fast at the same time. You know... It could be, it's, you think it's been at least five minutes, but then at the same time, it seems like a lot has happened in that five minutes or so since you got here. All right, I think we're going to have to risk it for the Trisket. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's your throw, dude? It's 20. Give it to him, then. It can't be well, worse. Well, that's why I was wondering what his, tw- uh, what his throw was. Even if it's 20, it can't I'm be worse. I'm not just going to tell you his statistics. <laughs> but he's my BFF. He's like, oh. My throw's a 25. <laughs> uh, all right. I reload my shotgun before we go out. Um, I hand one of the sticks of dynamite to Jameson, uh, just in case. Um, make sure he's got a lighter. And I say, we're going to make a break for the car. If those things come, you light that stick, and you throw it at them. Stay focused on the car. we got to get to that car and get out of here. 
Okay. Uh, 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 all right. Let, let, let's do it. All right. So we start. We start moving the stuff away from okay. the door. Are you getting ready to? Uh, are you making? Uh, okay. Yeah. So they start. You guys start moving. Uh, you start moving the furniture away from the door, getting the barricades off uh, as quickly as you can, shoving it out of the way. Um, you be ready to to light that and throw it. I'm. Uh, I've got my shotgun ready to go. Okay. Okay. We open the door. Uh, instead of just booking it, I take a quick look out the door around the corners. And then I say, run. You throw the door open. He's got his rifle slung over his back. And as he's holding the dynamite stick in one hand and he's got his lighter in the other hand. As you start making a break for... Are you trying to be sneaky or are you just making a break for it? Making a break for it. Okay. Sprinting. All right. You slam the door open and you start sprinting for the for the car. Once you do that, you hear some commotion in the woods on the other side as they've heard the door slam open and your footsteps as the two of you start hurrying towards the vehicle. And you hear uh, roars and screeches from the creatures in the woods, the smoothies, as they, as they start smoothly running towards you. <laughs> okay. Uh... <clears throat> Jameson, get to the car! Uh, can I see them coming towards us? Um, yeah, just as you're about to get, you're getting close to the vehicle and you start seeing them coming around the corner of the cabin. So, as you're doing this, uh, you're sprinting towards the vehicle, rushing towards it, you see Jameson lighting the dynamite, and he's attempting to throw it behind you as you guys are running and, and getting into the vehicle. So, let's give that a roll and see how it goes. He gets a bonus die. Um, he should probably have a penalty die since he's running and trying to throw it behind him while he's running. He just he just chucks it. All right. Um. Okay, so he rolled a seventy-one. That's a success. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a success. Yes! Wait, are you joking? Yes, I am joking. That is not a success. No! That is a monumental failure. <laughs> am I behind him? Yes. Um. <laughs> no. You kind of led the way out the front, so he was behind you. As you guys are rushing and you're kind of splitting, you're going to the driver's side, and he was going to the passenger side. Um, he throws the dynamite, and probably because of the nerves and the running but the dynamite appears to slip out of his hand as he attempts to throw it and it falls and lands in the grass just a few feet from where you guys are like oh, I dropped it I dropped a Bakersfield that's okay just get in the car I dropped the dynamite so he runs he, he throws open the door he jumps into it you see sizzling on the ground as you are jumping into the passenger or in the driver's side of the car the stick of dynamite and the small glowing ember at the end of it as it is burning closer and closer to the stick the two creatures are sprinting towards you running for a moment down on all fours for a second getting getting more traction with their long finger claws <laughs> coming towards you roaring and screeching what do you do bakersfield uh i'm gonna uh, pop it into reverse and just slam it. Uh, step on the gas uh, to try and make some distance, put some distance between us and the dynamite. Okay. So Bakersfield, you slam on the gas, you throw the car into reverse and start wheeling away from the burning ember of that lone stick of dynamite sitting in the grass, seemingly staring at you in the face. Uh, as the creatures are getting closer and closer, they're gaining on you. They are running faster than your car is reversing. You're moving. You're moving. It's a few seconds before you see the little light at the end of the dynamite go out. You only see that for just a split second before Major Bakersfield, would you roll 4d10 for me? <laughs> 4d10? Come on, Bakies. Yep. Uh, two fives, a three, and a nine, so 22. 22? 
Okay. Plus fire damage. <laughs> yes, plus fire damage. So the way that a dynamite stick works, it delivers 4d10 of damage to those within three yards, 2d10 to those within six yards, and 1d10 to those within nine yards. So... You're at nine yards. No, I'm ten yards. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, are you, what did you roll again, Sam? I rolled 22. 22? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, so cut in half, I guess, for the 2d10. The 11... And then cut in fourths. I guess that would then be five. Okay. So the creatures are a little bit in front of your vehicle as they're both... They're illuminated by the headlights as they're sprinting towards you. They, of course, do not know what that strange thing was that was thrown on the ground. So they ignore it as they sprint past it. So there's a bright flash and, ex and a huge explosion. A flash of fire, mostly dust and debris and rocks flying. Uh, you see the creatures get blasted towards the front of the vehicle as the dynamite explodes. Uh, the front windshield is blown out as the dynamite goes off. Uh, sending sh uh, shards of glass flying towards you and Jameson. As you both are going to take five points of damage oh, from the shock wave and and the shards of glass that are flying in through the window, slicing you, cutting into your skin. One slices just past the edge of your eye. This is how I become big boss. The explosion rocks you. It rocks the vehicle. And the you the two creatures slam into the hood of the vehicle as their momentum carries them. The momentum and the force of the explosion carries them into the hood of the vehicle as you are still careening down backwards down this dirt road. Um, all right, you lost five. Is that, that's half your uh, That's half, yeah. Hit points, that's, a, right? that's a major wound, right? Yes, it is. Aren't all your wounds major wounds? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Does that mean that uh, Jameson only takes a corporal wound? <laughs> yeah. Wait, so Alex doesn't... I, don't, I I thought I read it in the rule, though. Doesn't the Apophagite kind of... They're as shields, though? And the, yeah, they were in front of us. I feel like we should take less damage. You read in the rules that the Anthropophagi were shields? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The smoothies. <laughs> I had a smoothie you're going shield. To need to, you're going to need to make a con roll. Major Baker's field. Oh, I like yeah. Donovan's point though about having a smoothie shield. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing in there about smoothie shields at all. Um, there is stuff Oof. in there about shields, but 39 out of 50 it, regular success. But you didn't get hit by the by something on the other side of the smoothies. The shock wave from the explosion blew the uh, um, the windshield out. The windshield yeah, out. You're still gonna get yeah. the and that's what. Dang, That's what's man. causing the damage. That's what's hitting you guys. So, did they get nine yards away? Well, we were nine yards, I guess, because we only took five. I don't know about the smoothies. You were within nine yards. Dang, man. They were within the smoothies, six. The smoothies were closer. They took the mid-range of the blast. You guys took the long range of the blast. Uh, what did you roll, Bakersfield? I rolled 39 out of 50. So, a success? Success, yeah. Phew. Okay, Major Bakersfield, you do not fall unconscious. <laughs> oh, behind the wheel. <laughs> I grit my teeth and I slap myself in the face. <sighs> that does not knock you out. But your major wound, Major Bakersfield, is one shard of glass goes right into your left eye. Oh, you get a patch. I am Big Boss. <laughs> <laughs> Do you already have a patch in the, the best picture? news of the, all the, everything in the game. One scrapes along the outside. The second one uh, slices right into your eyeball. Ah, uh, uh. Cutting deep. The lights, the lights just go out in that eye all of a sudden. 
You're bleeding everywhere. There's smoke. Jameson is 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 yelling. He looks. Uh, you're trying to keep. You're trying to figure out what's going on. You're confused. Uh, the, you're careening around backwards. I'm gonna need you to make a drive roll. Oh. At disadvantage. Woo, 16 out of 50. Oh. Because you're blind. <laughs> Take a penalty die for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 16. Penalty die. Woo, 46 and 16. Both are successes. Oh, <laughs> man. So lucky. Ooh, my drive auto's 50. Right. Man. That is, the, <laughs> that is a lucky Bakersfield. You've got some real <laughs> lucky rolls all right in a row. Uh, you see that? You okay. see these smoothie? These are called balls. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bakersfield. Yes. You feel the wheel slipping out of your hand for a moment. Ah! As you're trying to to focus, you're trying to to bring your mind back into focus. Yeah. For a second it feels like you might slip away and that the wheel starts to slip out of your fingers. Ah! 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 But you're able to, at the last minute, I'll bring your grip back t tight on the steering wheel. Uh, you hit the brakes, um, slowing and stopping the car to keep you from careening off the road into one of the trees as you manage to bring your mind back into focus and fight it just off the end of unconsciousness. You're hurt, you're bleeding, you can't see, you think you're blind in, one, in your left eye. Uh, Jameson is also glancing around. He looks stunned. You are narrowly able to avoid uh, smashing this car as you are driving in reverse. Your rearview mirror is gone. You can't see behind you. But you're able to get yourself back into focus, pull yourself back together. This isn't the first time you've been blown up. You can handle <laughs> it. Uh, Baker so this what do you do? Are the smoothies on my hood dead, or are they still alive? Uh, well, do you want to check their pulse? <laughs> <laughs> Jameson, check their pulse. <laughs> <laughs> one of them is slid off. It's it's in front of the vehicle. The other one is just leaning on the hood right in front of you. Just shoot it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to... Gonna... They look like they're moving, or at least the one on the hood looks like it's moving. Are they on fire? No. Turn on the windshield wipers. There's not really fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, roll for damage. <laughs> what does a windshield wiper damage do? So one d three per one d three plus one. <laughs> Ongoing wipe damage. <laughs> 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 Um, I'm gonna pull out my M1911 from my hip holster. Okay. I'm gonna point it directly at the one on the hood, and I'm gonna say to Jameson, Jameson, take out the one that's on the grass in front of us. Uh, Jameson is a, uh, he's trying to focus. He's he's very stunned from the explosion that just happened, and so he's kind of you see his eyes are are out of focus. He's looking around. He's kind of looking at you. He's bloody. He's got blood coming down his head, dripping down his face. Uh, since the one is directly in front of me, do I get point blank range on that bad boy? Uh, yes, you definitely do. Okay, I'm gonna. Can I fire um one shot at that one and then two at the one on the ground, or can I only target one monster at a time? You can't see the one on the ground. It's down in front of the in front of the vehicle in front of you. All right, well I'm gonna shoot three <laughs> shots into this thing at point blank range. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going right, to... roll it. Okay. Uh, let's you get one penalty die for each shot. Even though it's point blank? Oh, yeah. Cancels out the penalty die, so just a straight roll. Oh, ten. Yeah, biggest field. Seventy... Seventy-nine. That one missed, so I'll spend four luck on that to get a success. Okay. And then... 38, so three successes. Three successes? Down to 
56 luck. Pew, pew, pew. Okay, uh, alright, roll your damage. Okay, uh, I'm 19, 1d10 uh, plus 2. So, 3d10. Oh, 3 and a 2, that's 5. Man, my damage rolls are always going And a 6, so 11 plus 6. Uh, so 17. 17. Okay. So, Bakersfield, you're sitting there in the vehicle. You're looking at the creature on the hood in front of you. As it starts moving, it it shifts up and looks up at you. Its, its black eye makes contact with yours, and its left arm comes up and claws into the hood. It starts dragging itself up towards you. Its mouth opens up, exposing its huge shark teeth as it comes towards you. You reach down and you draw your Colt 1911 off your hip, point it directly into the mouth of the creature, as you say. And he's not okay today. Smooth criminal. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, For a split second, it pauses in mid-bite as it gets a really confused it's like <laughs> look <laughs> as you pull the trigger three times and blast three 45 caliber rounds right into its mouth and it blows it right off the back of the hood as it goes <laughs> Jamal <laughs> Jamal Jameson <laughs> Alright, I pop I uh J- J- I, Jim on Major <laughs> Jam on. I uh I shift the car into drive and I plow full steam ahead into the one on the ground. So you're gonna you're gonna plow it? Okay. I'm gonna make a uh alright, you start smoothie compost. <laughs> uh you hit drive, oh you start plowing. <laughs> you shift into drive and you stomp on the gas sending the vehicle lurching forward you feel it bumping over some obstruction directly in front of the vehicle as you drive forward a few feet as you're driving uh, smashing over the body of the creature that you just unloaded your your 45 into your window on your left smashes open as a clawed hand comes reaching in uh, towards your face from the outside. And all right, Bakersfield, let's see. What are you going to do? Well, my dodge is not very high. Um, Can I even, can I fight back? Uh, Because pretty sure you'd bite it if that thing came in you're like Arr. Arr. yeah you can you can fight back why don't you just shoot it you can't shoot he's gotta either dodge or fight back yeah my fight back's a shoot <laughs> I just go roll a throaty that only roll works riding brawl with, with new keepers with like me <laughs> um maybe I can do a could I do uh, like some kind of drive auto roll and like swerve the vehicle to try and throw it off? Or smash it into it. Like, s- yeah, like smash it into Jameson's cabin or something or into a tree. Well, you you can, but very first, I mean, how are you dealing with this this claw or this hand that is smashing through the window oh, coming towards you right at this I second? I reach down and I pull the, uh, the seat rest so it's way coming. back. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have those in the twenties. <laughs> oh frick! I don't even know how I would dodge. I'm just sitting here. What's your fight back, bro? And my fight back's my fighting brawl is 64, Do whereas that. my dodge is only 30. So I guess I'm fighting back. Stab it in the hand or something. Um, yeah, I, I guess I uh, smoking barrel on its arm. Whatever. Sorry, you know, I don't mean to meddle. Fight back. So my left hand is on the steering wheel. My right hand is the one that had my Colt M1911. Um, yeah. Can I fight back by just turning my gun towards my driver's side window and pull the trigger? Um. Y- Ooh. Uh, I. 
<laughs> I don't know how else to really fight back in this position or dodge. <laughs> yeah, you usually. I like the. I mean, you can you can always you can always fight back. I typically don't allow fighting back with firearms because that kind of breaks the game a little too much. Um, what about my trench knife? Um, I mean, you can. Well, I guess I can just n try and knock its hand away. Right, I mean, yeah, you can try and do that. Catch it by the wrist and do the classic, like, Stallone thing where, like, the claws are right here. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and block its hand out of the way, reach my hand up around behind, reach my hand up around behind its head, Doesn't have slam a head. it into my car, so then I can shoot it. Point that is very oh, elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my turn next. I want it in prime position. All right, so you're going to try. All right, we'll call this a, uh, you're fighting back with a fighting maneuver where you're going to try and pin its hand uh, back. Yeah, like you said. So go ahead and roll your fighting brawl. I think he said he was trying to hug it. I want to make out with it. You want to hug it? Okay. 26 out of 64. That is a hard success. Yeah. I'm glad I switched dice. Uh, a hard success? Yeah. Okay, it rolled a regular success. Yeah. A 34. Smoothies are a dish best served call. <laughs> <laughs> so your hard success beats its regular success as this claw smashes through the window next to you. You Just in time, your incredible quick honed reflexes from combat. You're able to flip your arm up and catch it just in time and pin this, this uh, questing clawed hand up against the the frame of the window before it's able to dig itself into your neck. Get that claw out of my face! Alright, I uh, swing my Colt 19 uh, uh, frick, Colt M1911 directly towards it, shove it into its mouth, and pull the trigger three times. Um, so... So, yeah, you swung, you're grabbing it with your left hand, your Colt's in your right hand, um, as you're kind of driving forwards. So, so reaching over, basically, <laughs> with the way that you're sitting and trying to kind of do this, you can poke your gun out the edge of the window pointing down towards the creature. You can't really see the rest of the creature because it's down out of the frame of the window and its hand just kind of reached up and was trying to grab you out. So you're pointing your gun down, trying to fire blindly at the creature you're dragging along here. Uh, so you can fire, but what I'm getting at is you're going to need to fire at disadvantage with a penalty die. All right, I'm going for it. Why don't you slice its arm off with your trench knife instead? Because I'd rather freaking blow this He's thing. already got his gun, gun I've already got hand. my gun. Yeah, Pete, stop metagaming. Yeah, get out of my game. <laughs> All right, I'm firing three times at this bald okay. smoothie. All right, number one. Uh, you're, that's gonna be that's gonna be two penalty die then. Uh, Baker. Wait, scale. I thought it was one. It's one for finding firing blindly out the window, and then it's wow. it's two for firing three shots. All right, give me your other one, Abe. <laughs> I've got seventy five, so I feel like if I hit it at least once, and I it's taken eleven damage. All right, here's Woo -hoo -hoo. three and sixty-three. I rolled two zeros on my other two Jeez. dice and a sixty on one of them, so that was a success. You're doing three shots again? Heck yeah! So there's one success. So, all right. Uh, two fifty. Wow, the same two dice rolled the same number again. 52 and 12. So that's also a success. For my second shot. And oh, holy crap! Dude. The same two dice rolled the same number. 40. So holy like loaded crap. dice. Dude. Dude. 48 and 78. So that one was a miss. They're making babies um, over I'll there. I'll just accept the miss on this one. Do two shots. Okay. That's that crazy. crazy. All three All rolls. All three rolls were the same. Holy. Two zeros, two forties, and then uh, what was? Oh, two fifties. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'll roll damage twice then. Which plus is, two on each. Yeah, plus two. Right out. Yeah. So two d ten plus two. 
six and a ten, so twenty. <laughs> twenty damage. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Bakersfield. Who oh, needs man. slotty butt fast? <laughs> oh man. Alex looks kind of disappointed. I think he's really got nothing on Mr. Netty Hands. Big boss doesn't go down like I this. I just foiled the keeper's plans. He wanted to kill me off in an epic way. No way, man. Me and Slotty Botfoss, man. I am riding that thing into battle. And if I'm dying, it's going down with a stick of dynamite in my hand and 20 smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Major Bakersfield. Yeah. You pin that arm up against the frame of the window and you reach your 1911 out the window, pointing it down, just firing blindly, moving it back and forth, hoping against hope that you're going to make contact with this creature that you are dragging along with you as you are driving forward in the vehicle. You pull the trigger three times and uh, after the third shot, at some point during these gun blasts, you feel the arm the hand that has been pushing towards you suddenly go limp. Bakersfield, you feel the car driving a little oddly, a bit wobbly. You poke your head out the window, you see the creature behind off to the side, laying motionless in the grass. And as you kind of look over to the front, you see you have a flat tire in front, most likely blown out from the force of the dynamite explosion. So as you get out, inspecting around you, inspecting the creatures, you see a greasy smear underneath the vehicle from the one you ran over. Uh, you notice both front tires are blown out. And you hear something in the grass behind you. And you turn around to see the creature that you thought was dead is crawling right towards you, mouth open, claw extended, about to rip into your uh, rip into your exposed thigh, going right for your ephemeral arty artery. Ha! Just before it is crushed underneath the weight of an enormous flying creature that falls out of the sky. It lands and it shrieks out its cry of triumph as it lands in front of its master, requesting what he has summoned it for. That's how it's done, Jameson. Give him a battle cry. Dudes, I just took down three smoothies pretty much single handedly. Yeah, Jameson, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> So you are now blind in one eye, big boss style. <laughs> That's Worth a battle scar. It just makes you cooler. Well, it's about time, slotty bot fast. <laughs> That's not my game. All right, um, Jameson, get out of the car. I told you to stop calling me slotty bot fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The command I have for you tonight is simple. Fly the two of us back to New Jerusalem and keep me in the air until dawn. Climb aboard. You hear the voice in your mind. It's not even words. It's just kind of expressions, thoughts, impressions. Agreeing to the command you, you have given it. It will fly you south back to New Jerusalem. Uh, staying around till dawn is not something it is uh, that is in its capability of doing. And for the first time that we're seeing this creature, it's a large winged creature that seems almost insectoid in ways, has clawed feet out below it and long wings, kind of a hairy, wiry fur 
uh, all over it with a large beaked mouth in front that uh, is covered in a kind of black chitin uh, at the end of a long neck that moves sinuously as it looks towards you, looks around into the woods, and crouches down waiting for you and Jameson to climb on top. So Jameson comes over, grabs you by the shoulder, taps you twice, points at the creature and says, My tuba. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys climb aboard and fly away into the sunset like at the end of Out of This World for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> Uh, you guys both climb aboard the creature as it crouches down and then leaps into the air. Takes off at a rate that you were not quite expecting. Sam, thanks for listening to this episode of the Arkham Files. If you like what you heard, please leave us a five-star review, share the show with your friends, and check us out on patreon.com forward slash the Arkham Files, where you can sign up to get some cool bonuses and support your favorite show. Thanks again for being an Arkham Files listener.